Guys, welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel. I think in times like these where the markets are super volatile, it's important that you get my spiel on risk tolerance. Risk tolerance is a tried and true fundamental aspect of investing that cannot go uh, undiscussed in markets like this. A lot of people are losing their freaking shorts. They're falling all over themselves to sell out of the market. It's the dumbest thing you can possibly freaking do. Here's what they have failed to identify. They have failed to identify their own risk tolerance. And you say, Ryan, how the hell am I supposed to do that if I've never been an investor before? I'm going to give you a couple tips. If you're an investor and you don't know squat about the stock market, this is going to really, really help you. And this is 10 minutes of 25 years of experience jammed through in a few seconds to try and help you understand if you knew nothing about the stock market whatsoever to understand risk tolerance as it applies to you and start defining this and understanding in so far as it's not going to be something that you are going to be able to nail down on right away. I've been investing my whole life and I'm still evolving in my risk tolerance. Every now and then I'll stretch what I feel I'm tolerant to with regard to market fluctuations and it's not going to be any different for you, all right? But if you deploy these strategies that I'm going to talk about here, it will really help you buffer the storms and ultimately remain true on what I feel is the most fundamental that I'll share with you last after I go through these uh, deliberations, pieces of things to take into heart when you're looking to define your own risk tolerance. Number one, invest defensively. Invest defensively. You might think, what the heck does that mean, Ryan? Do I invest in bonds? Absolutely not. I have an absolute affinity to stock market equities out there and the products that will uh, subject your money to those equities, okay? They come in the form of ETFs, index funds, mutual funds, et cetera. There's a lot of products out there, dividend ETFs, a lot of different products out there that you can buy one product and it can diversify your money over the, over the course of those products. Those, my friends, are what I would consider to be defensively held uh, mechanisms to take your money and diversify them over the stock market to ensure that if a handful of those companies go belly up, you still have a swath of invested dollars in those companies that are actually outperforming at the very time that those companies, that if you had invested into them individually, you would have lost all of your money. Okay, And if you enter into these products and you really are earmarking that importance of a diversified defensive exposure to the market, you have no excuse not to invest and sleep easy at night. Okay, And this is the safest way to enter into the markets. This is the strategy of potentially entering into just investing in the entire S&P 500, which is 500 of the largest companies that make up the large cap domestic stock market here in the U.S. It is the best flagship ETF that you can use. I talk about it all the time. VOO is just that product. I own it myself. I love it. I live it. I learn it. It is part of me. It's ingrained in my investing philosophy to understand that that defensive mechanism always exists with me having my dollars pledged to the S&P 500, it matches the market year over year. I don't have to worry about, you know, if the market's up 20%, I don't have to worry about my portfolio being down 20%. I'm gonna be up 20% in that portfolio because that is what the S&P rendered. It is a sleep easy way of investing and it helps folks get new dollars invested to the market on the onset. And it helps you to put time under your umbrella as an investor and really allow yourself to enjoy being an investor without being skinned off of the market. Furthermore, it allows you to understand the fluctuation in those dollars, because I'm not suggesting that you'll invest in the S&P, and it's just gonna go up every day. Far from it. Your investment dollars are gonna fluctuate, and on a scale of one to five, an ETF like an S&P 500 ETF is rated four or five, okay? On the higher end of risk tolerance, but I would suggest that the defensive mechanism, if you understand the makeup of the ETF or index fund, it's really, really going to help you. And it's going to coincide with one of the other strategic avenues of risk tolerance that can really help coupled with why you choose to go with ETFs as opposed to more of a mutual fund type of approach. We'll talk about that in a moment. 
The next one on the list that's going to help you build tolerance to the market, there's a lot of people who are really good out there in savings. Look at your savings as a buffer to volatility to your investment dollars. You ever thought about that? You ever thought about using the 25000 in uh, savings dollars as an excuse to say, you know what, now's about time where I can maybe segue, I don't know, $500 into an investment program for yourself? If you're one of those folks that are sitting on a wad of cash, I would commend your ability to save money and also scrutinize your inability to identify the importance of segueing whatever percentage of dollars you can stomach to the stock market because I can tell you what, that $25,000 20 years from now is going to be $25,000 and it's going to be worth significantly less due to the impacts of inflation over that money. Okay, So you need to almost invest out of necessity, not because you get excited about investing because you tune into my message and I give you this grand idea of segueing $500 or $1,000 out of that $25,000 and introducing it into the stock market in the capacity that I do. But having that savings there can really help buffer and help justify, look, maybe I've never considered entering into the stock market over here, but the way Ryan explains is that, like, look, you got a buffer. And you can use the savings account as one of those buffers or rationale or justification to enter into stock market. Me, I use my pension as part of that justification, and I also use you know, the amount of idle cash that I have to justify some of the positions that I take. Look, if I'm taking ample risk over here, and over here I'm taking no risk, it seems to be a neutral application for me in that one helps me justify the other. And I think that philosophy can really help you as well. Number three, we want to avoid fees. This takes me back to the ETF recommendation that I have in looking at those Vanguard ETFs that are very, very low expense, enter into and get you exposure in the maximum capacity to make the maximum amount of money, but also subject your money to the least amount of fees in the industry. This is why I shy away from mutual funds, because active management has been failed, failing to meet the benchmark for many, many decades. They don't want to admit to this. This is the facts, okay? And guys like myself will come out through a social media conduit and share that with the masses. Now, if you're a retail investor, you don't know squat about investing, you're not gonna understand what I just said. But I'm gonna say it again because it's worth saying. 96% of active fund managers fail meet the returns of the S&P 500, the very ETF that I just talked about a few minutes prior to, okay? Now, by underperforming, you might think, okay, well, is there times of outperformance? No, not really. They consistently underperform the market from year in, year out. There are going to be those fund managers that on an isolated year take over and above average risk or a, a t attach a beta to the risk that they're taking to outpace the, the market. But over time, the failure rate falls to 100% of fund managers failing to meet the index. You might as well just invest in the S&P 500 and sleep easy doing so. But the real kicker is the fees that you're going to pay for that underperformance. And that is the key to maybe avoid doing that because that can be a real hamper. Not only are you underperforming the market, but you're paying and subjecting your dollars to paying exuberant fees to the fund managers who's sitting on their freaking high horse making their fat ass money while you're losing money and taking all of the risk. You can eliminate all of that jargon by just taking a passive approach to the market entering into ETFs or index funds. You want to avoid fees altogether. That can really help you understand on the risk tolerance side that yes, you are taking a little bit of risk to enter into an equity product, okay? But you can be rest assured that that risk is being taken with the littlest amount of uh, fees that you're taking uh, in, in, your, um, in your strategy. On the onset, you want to avoid single stock. Very, very important. Avoid single stock. Go with the passive products out there. It's very, very important. I'm not suggesting that single stock is a bad way of investing. I invest in single stock myself. However, for those new investors out there that are looking to define your risk tolerance, you are going to find either by nature of a rude awakening or you're going to identify that single stock is a whole different bailiwick requiring due diligence on your part to enter into the equities that you're looking to take part in. You're going to identify that even if you do that due diligence, a stock can be cut in half by 50% very, very quickly. A lot of stocks right now are down from their highs 50% plus or more. 
If you start to get into the uh, hyper growth that everybody was hyping, everybody wanted to buy Shopify, everybody wanted to, to, to buy uh, Spotify, everybody wanted to buy Zoom Media, everybody wanted to buy Peloton, I can keep going and going and going down the list. Most of those names are down 80, 90%. Avoid it, you don't need it. It can be lucrative, but it can be lucrative to those savvy investors that pay attention and they wanna take on more of an active profile in their application. When you're looking to define your risk tolerance, it is not something that you need to be messing with on the onset. It will help you identify your risk tolerance if you focus in on one strategy, one strategy alone, live to fight another day, identify the range of expectation over your dollars within that one strategy, as opposed to coupling or confusing that strategy with multiple strategies on top of it. You're just gonna get confused, you're gonna get overwhelmed, and what we want to avoid is your uh, inevitable exit from the market, okay? The last thing and the reason why we talk about all this risk tolerance in the market and doing the things that I suggested to you is to, at all cost, and I do want to stress at all cost, remaining long on the market. We want to deploy a strategy that you can remain long on no matter what. Market rolls off 20, 30%, you remain long. You uh, invest in a strategy that you never ever get shaken from. You identify all kinds of different people out there who have all kinds of different pipe dreams for you, but you stay tried and true on this method because you have the tolerance enough to stay within your range of comfort in the strategy that you've selected. And to remain long on the stock market, no matter what, is the ultimate foundation of realizing the best amount of returns into your future. By defining your risk tolerance in the stock market, understanding what you can and can't handle in stock market investing, I award you guys on a scale of one to 10, a neutral risk tolerance. If you're gonna adjust it, adjust it down toward the one, which is a safer investment move as opposed to being a 10. Most new investors, they come to me and they're like, Ryan, I'm a 10. I wanna be a millionaire tomorrow, I'm a 10. The fact of the matter is you are not a 10. You need to get over yourself and you need to award a neutral risk tolerance to start and look to define that risk tolerance as you age and evolve uh, in your investment strategies and potentially uh, broaden out your approach to stock market investing as you add on different strategies to your portfolio and your objectives going forward. Guys, if you appreciate the message coming through the channel, make sure and subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave your comments at the bottom of this video, share the message with anybody out there that you know can resonate with this idea that I have about how to discuss and define risk tolerance as it has evolved for me over the last 25 years. And I've been able to summarize that in a 10 minute video for you guys. It can scale to the masses. People can really resonate with this idea of some of the elements that I've outlined in this video, guys. Really appreciate you tuning in to the totality of the message and good luck in your investment future.